you, Bonnie and Jerry. Good morning, everybody. What a week we've had. I am thinking it was a good week to practice I am whole and holy. How many of you practiced that with me this week? Yay, I am whole and holy. So knowing that we had such a great opportunity to practice that idea of I am whole and holy, I know some of you got some insights out of that practice. And so I wonder if there's anybody who would like to share what that experience was like for them. Shannon, I see you. Um, this was kind of an interesting thing. My girlfriend at one point got me like a gift basket and a little pocket mirror in it. And I don't usually use mirrors, so I just kind of threw it in my purse. And then in the morning, right after the practice, I looked at myself in the mirror and said, I am the Christ, I am whole, and I am holy. And then I got a little off track later that day, and I got that mirror out and looked myself in the mirror and said, you are the Christ, you are whole, and you are holy. And I started doing that throughout the week. Super. In the eye. You are. You are whole. You are holy. You are the Christ. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Right? Can you imagine? Oh, you are. You are. You are, Mary Lee. What do you got to share? Uh, my understanding of all this is that in the Bible it tells you you don't can be connected to the divine, the God, the goddess. Uh, don't put anything in between. And what this virus is doing is taking away everything we put in between mm. so that we can connect to the divine more perfectly. And so this is really a spiritual experience that we're going through to be more spiritual, more God connected and not have anything in between. Yes. Thank you, Mary Lee. Okay, that was my message. Everyone can go home now. <laughs> that was fabulous. All right, anybody else want to share? I am whole and holy. Okay. All right, I know I worked at it this week to remember that. I can tell you that as a um, spiritual leader, as a minister, nothing has prepared me for what this last week has brought about, as I'm sure it has all of you, right? Here we are. We all get to experience life in this moment, and what is it? And so... I've just, our, our talk today, our message today is on, I am here in the depths with you. I am here in the depths with you. And so I thought, I've been thinking about that image, right, of the ocean. And imagine you're on the surface of the ocean, you're in a boat on the surface of the ocean, and the waves are churning. You might have 40-foot swells churning, swaying that boat, right? And on the surface, there's that. But if we could dive deep down into the depths of the ocean, we would find that it's still there. And so this is what it can be like for us. We can stay on the surface. What have we seen on the surface? What have you observed on the surface this week? Chaos, fear, lack, greed. Greed, what was it? Anxiety. Absurdity. Anybody try to buy toilet paper this week? <laughs> yeah, right? Right. Here we are on the surface in the fear and the worry and the concern and the what? Churning, churning, churning. Anybody experience that this week? Yeah. I don't know how you can, you know, be moving about the world without having some of that in your awareness. And yet, at that very same time that all of this is churning on the surface, there's stillness in the depths. God is there in the depths. So I want to share with you a, uh, a little bit of this, um, the book, The Universal Christ. So we are using as our uh, Lenten series Richard Rohr's book on the Universal Christ. And I was reading earlier this week in the chapter that is entitled, Love is the Meaning. It's chapter 5, Love is the Meaning. For Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, a French Jesuit priest who trained as a paleontologist and geologist, love is the very physical structure of the universe. That is a very daring statement, especially for a scientist to make. But for Teilhard, gravity, atomic bonding, orbits, cycles, photosynthesis, 
ecosystems, force fields, electromagnetic fields, sexuality, human friendship, animal instinct, and evolution all reveal an energy that is attracting all things and beings to one another in a movement toward ever greater complexity and diversity. And yet, ironically, also toward unification at ever deeper levels. This energy is quite simply love under many different forms. What I loved as I read that was like, oh my gosh, that's unity. Because Charles Fillmore spoke about this 100 years ago. He described love in this very same way, the power that is love, that is harmonizing it all, that is moving through all creation. And here is how we will find the depths. And here is how we will move out of that chaos. So one of the things that's been really clear to me is as Mary Lee exclaimed, so if Love is holding it all together, the very universe that we are existing in, all of life, then love is also here now, present and active within this virus that is spreading across the globe, right? And so I think about, well, what are those divine um, ideas that we can come to that can help take us into those depths? Has it ever been more clear to you that we are one? right? We're being told things like social distancing. I think that's a brand new word that will make it into the dictionary now, right? Social distancing because what happens with me is obviously having an impact on you. And so a, a virus can travel all across the globe impacting us all. We are one. I was thinking about that that saying, you know, a, a butterfly can move its wings and halfway across the globe, you can feel that. And this felt like that to me. People coming down with this across the globe and, and we are all impacting each other. We are all one. So oneness is rising to the surface. Oneness. Have you ever been more mindful of things like washing your hands? What songs are you washing your hands to? Happy birthday twice for Barry. I am the radiant life of God for Jesse. But I am the light of the world for Deb. Right? So mindfully doing a practice like washing our hands, not just quickly running them under and then moving on, but mindfully washing our hands, remembering we're one. And as I touch here and then touch me, we're one. So mindfulness has been very much a part of what this experience is. We can stay on the surface in the fear and the chaos and the confusion. And what we will do then is constrict rather than Right? Expand. And in the constriction, you see it happening. You see the short store shelves, right? Emptying out so that scarcity is now something we're experiencing. But it's of our own making. There's no need for scarcity. There's enough. There's more than enough. But it's fear moving us that causes us to hoard and to hold rather than to expand and give. So we have an opportunity here. How can I be more generous in my interaction with one another? Some of that looks like physical sharing. Some of that looks like um, being aware of the thoughts that I'm holding about these different things and choosing instead to come from this place of generosity and joy and life and love. And it's an honoring. How many of you became aware of that inner wisdom that is within you, that was guiding you today, whether you should even be here or not? And the conversation around that. Many, many churches have chosen to shut their doors. You know, and as, again, leading this church that 
everything that's come this week and the decisions that had to be made and trusting that inner wisdom, that inner guidance that is there revealing to each of us what is ours to do and trusting that and not making anyone wrong for the decisions that they have made. Uh, Bonnie and Jerry have been playing beautiful music today because Trey was supposed to be here. Now, Trey isn't sick, right? No, he's not sick. But he understands, oh, we're one, and while I'm not sick, I might be carrying the virus on me, and I don't want to make anyone else sick. And so we honor Trey for his decision that he didn't want to be here today to protect all of you. And we honor all of you who have decided to be here today in spite of the fact that the same could be true for any one of us. Because we're trusting our inner wisdom and our inner guidance to know what is the right thing to do. We have a choice in this moment. A choice of how we respond. Richard Rohr in his book talks about Jesus um, really being sharing a ministry that was about embracing change. So this week it's become really clear to me. <laughs> Things were not only changing like day by day, but literally hour by hour. And even to this, this day you think, okay, when is this going to be done? How long is this going to go? Right? We're all having to move through the change together. How do we do so? Grounded in the depths, right? And so uh, this is what Richard Rohr has to say about Jesus. Jesus quite clearly believed in change. In fact, the first public word out of his mouth was the Greek imperative verb metanoias, which literally translates as change your mind. Unfortunately, in the fourth century, St. Jerome translated the word into Latin as penitentia, which means do penance, which is the more commonly understood way of translating repent. Repent! The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent! Not from this place of doing penance, not from this place of I'm a miserable sinner, not from this place of I can never be whole and holy, not from that place and that understanding, which is what repent has become, but from the understanding of change your mind. Change your mind. Here we have an opportunity it's like a magnifying glass on us, right? Like totally highlighting how we all are within ourselves and with one another when we are going through something as a whole world that is creating so much fear and chaos. Where am I with that? When I recognize that I'm there, can I change my mind? Can I turn back to God? Can I turn back to that understanding that within me is that very life essence that is God that is right here, right now, literally moving through every cell and every atom of my body temple? My body with intelligence knows how to heal itself. Can I center myself in that understanding? Can I center myself in that understanding that divine mind is right here, right now, providing me with a perfect divine idea of how I can meet this moment? That's happening. Diane, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on Diane Spence here. Because she received this beautiful divine idea, because we're all hearing social distancing. Don't go out. But there's nothing better to get out in the fresh air and the sunshine right now, right? Thank you, God. At least it's not snowing right? So we've got some beautiful spring weather, some sunshine, some fresh air. Diane had the perfect divine idea that this may be a beautiful opportunity for people to come out and support your spiritual community by working on the gardens. We can do that right here, right now. If you want something to do, if you'd like to get out, if you'd like to get your hands dirty, if you've got some kids and you'd like to give them something to do, come on out. Diane, you're going to be here at 10 a.m. in the mornings, right? Every day, she says, that's her commitment because she got that divine idea. This is something I can do, we can do. And so Diane will be here at 10 o'clock every day. If you want to come and help her garden, come and help her garden. She'll find you something to do. Right? So 
what divine ideas are out there moving me, inspiring me, encouraging me and you to show up in this in love and not in fear. In love and not in judgment. In love and in generosity, in giving. Who's with me? You're all here, right? That speaks for itself. So I want to share with you our practice today. And then I'm going to end with something special because I'm going to share with you a song that you can wash your hands with. <laughs> but first the practice. So um, I want us to take our time this week to contemplate God is here. Where is God? God is here in the depths. God is here. In the virus, God is here. In the challenge, God is here. In the blessing, God is here. God is here. Say that with me. God is here. Do you know that? God is here. God is here. So we're going to practice that. Throughout your day, pause and consider God is here. God. Yes, let's do it. Wait. Eddie? Oh, I do it every time. All right, Alex is right. God is here. Let's do it together again. God is here. Right? And then we're going to pause throughout the day and remember that. And then ask yourself the question, so if God is here, how does that impact the way I am coming into this moment? How does that impact the thought that I'm holding, the word that I'm speaking, the action that I'm taking? If I'm fully grounded in the depths of understanding that God is here, how does that change the way we show up in any moment? Will you practice that with me this week? The world could use some sanity. The world could use some generosity. The world could use some love. And it's through each one of us that that takes place. Now I shared with you this morning